Today on This Week Health. If you're not able to trust the data, then your self-service analytics program won't be successful. And that's where data governance comes in. Your organization are going to be equipped with the right information about your data. And your internal knowledge within your organization is going to grow immensely. Welcome to This Week Health Community. Town Hall is our show hosted by leaders on the front lines with interviews of people making things happen in healthcare with technology. My name is Bill Russell. I'm creator of This Week Health, a set of channels dedicated to keeping health IT staff current and engaged. For five years now, we've been making podcasts that amplify great thinking to propel healthcare forward. We want to thank our show partners for investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. Now, on to today's show. Welcome to This Week Health. I am Linda Yang, and on today's Town Hall podcast, I have Heidi Waldsmith, and Heidi is currently the Senior Director of IT Program Management Activity Health. Welcome, Heidi. Please introduce yourself. Hi, Linda. Thanks for having me. I'm Heidi Waldsmith. I joined Activity Health in January of this year and have responsibilities for our data governance and data modernization programs. And Tivity Health, an organization, our products seek to promote healthy, happy, longer lives. And our, our flagship brand, Silver Sneakers, has a 30-year brand and history in promoting community fitness programs specifically for senior citizens. That's great. That is a very strong brand. And so you mentioned you have oversight on the data modernization. Can you give us a little bit more detail on what you and your team do specifically at Tivity Health as it relates to data modernization? Sure. So really simply put, data modernization is a way in which we think about moving our data from legacy environments, siloed environments, and activities, SQL servers into a more modern structure, in our case, a, a cloud data warehouse. And doing so brings an incredible amount of efficiency to our organization and the ability to then use that data for insights. Right. That is certainly important. And I know that within the healthcare environment or within the health space, I don't believe there is a lack of data, right? There is an enormous amount of data. The challenge that many organizations experience at this point is really how to gain insight from that data and how to use that data in a way that makes the most sense and can be used in a way that helps either predict or infer a future state or solution. And so I'm glad to hear that Tivity Health is certainly moving along in that evolution. And it's certainly a an evolution. It's, it's different phases and iteration to get to a point where organizations can really make impactful decisions on data. What does that environment look like for Tivity Health as you move into that cloud environment? For us, one of our top priorities was to make sure our data was governed. And for me, that was a combination of really people, process, and technology. Some of our leaders would tell you we've attempted data governance programs at Tivity in the past multiple times, and they failed. And I think what changed for us this year is that we invested in tooling to support our efforts. So we're now seeking to discover more about our data, actually catalog and document the data, track lineage associated with the data, and really understand it, ensuring that critical data elements are defined and that they're fit for purpose in our organization. And once we have that established, then we're able to create a plan for transitioning the data into our cloud data warehouse. Right. Those are 
great processes that you've put in place to support the data governance structure. That sounds great. And I know that you have a team, right? An IT team who's working behind the scenes to implement these processes. So as a leader, how do you stay connected with your work and as well as helping your team stay connected in their work? I think regular check-ins with my team are incredibly powerful. I seek to not only meet with my team members regularly, but foster a friendship and create a culture where we're not only increasing our faith time, but we are able to talk about really difficult challenges we're facing and what we can do together to unblock those challenges. And oftentimes challenge the status quo. Think about how might we challenge ourselves to innovate and do things differently so that we can move forward and and reduce some of the complexity in our environment. Team members want to grow. They want to be successful. So I like to think about how can I create opportunities for a member of my team to grow professionally in the work that they're doing and making sure that they stay connected to that work while in the process. Right. Well, how is the remote first arrangement activity working for you? And how is that impacting how your team kind of functions and the dynamics with your team? Activity prescribed early on to work from where your most productive culture and creates a lot of opportunities for our organization to not only have different access to a talent pool, which has really created some high performing dynamics amongst our team in the talent now that we're able to reach being able to work remotely. But we're also able to use technologies such as Zoom and Teams to stay on video, making sure we stay connected And we get to use the creative parts of our minds to engage in social activities or happy hours or other ways in which we can stay connected. All right. We're going to be doing webinars a little different this year. I've talked to you a little bit about this. We got together with our advisors. They told us, hey, you got to do them different. They're just not serving the community well. And we said, what do you want? They said community generated topics, great contributors, not product driven they want a, a more honest and open discussion. And they said, what we want is not no on-demand webinars. We want once and done type webinars on a consistent date and time. So every first Thursday of the month, our first one being January 5th, first Thursday of the month, one o'clock Eastern time, we are going to be doing a webinar. You can count on it, put it on your calendar. Every first Thursday of the month, At one o'clock Eastern time, we're going to do a webinar. The topics are going to be generated by the community, and we would love to have you there. Our first one, January 5th, priorities for 2023, a CIO discussion with integrated delivery networks. February 2nd, we're going to come back with academic medical center CIOs talking about their priorities. And then we're going to hit some of the other great topics that they've given us for the year. And we would love to have you join us. Again, thisweekhealth.com, top right-hand corner, it'll have our current webinar and our upcoming webinars. You can sign up right there. And if you miss it, it's not on demand anymore. So we would love to have you there. Make sure somebody from your team is there taking notes and bringing stuff back to your staff. So we hope that this works out. Any feedback, go ahead and send us a note. We would love to hear about it. Right. So are there any challenges that you're facing with this kind of arrangement? And can you share some of those on how you overcame some of the challenges? I think for us, it's been to be very transparent around our schedules. We share visibility into our calendars so that we can create a culture where the timings of our agile sessions and ceremonies within our technology organization can be scheduled around those important family events that our team members have. So school pickups and and drop-offs as an example. And we've just use that transparency in our calendars to 
organize a lot of our ceremonies at a time when all of the team members can be available. That's great. Yes, certainly I value transparency as well. And not only transparency of schedules, but when teams are working on a project, I value the transparency of progressions of that project and transparency as to the deadlines and the major milestones, right? Mm -hmm. So that everyone can certainly be on the same page and help each other meet those dates. Well, Heidi, what is your perspective on innovation in this current healthcare technology landscape? So we talked a little bit about it. Healthcare is by itself complex and healthcare data even more complex. I think the evolution in the data space is we have to continue to think about self-service analytics and how can a team like mine provide a service to the organization in which a user out there really in any area of the company at their fingertips have access to data, find information they need to support their work, and move away from the idea of logging a ticket or making a request to have a new dashboard or a new KPI built in a tool. That's going to provide immense speed to value for partners out there in the organization. Certainly. And with the self-service analytics pieces, data governance does play a huge factor into that because when people are able to kind of create their own metrics and reporting and visualize the information, we want it to use the same basis of calculations as much as possible, right? And so it's great that your team is implementing those data governance processes to support the self-service piece of that. Well, very good. I agree with that. Self-service is it's part of the evolution of the data democracy, right? And because there's so much data, anybody can access those and use it in a way that makes the most sense for either their department or their area of expertise and where they see the most value. But having some structure around that to understand where that data is coming from and what it means is critical to have the right information at the right time. Right. If you're not able to trust the data, then your self-service analytics program won't be successful. And that's where data governance comes in and brings some rigor and documentation to that process and is honestly a way in which more individuals in your organization are going to be equipped with the right information about your data and your internal knowledge within your organization is going to grow immensely if you have a governance program in place. Exactly. All right, Heidi, it comes to an end, but is there anything you'd like to add at this point or highlight? No, and thank you for having me, Linda. I've enjoyed our conversation. All right, you're very welcome. It's my pleasure. You have a great day, Heidi. Thank you, you too. I really love this show. I love hearing from the people and the leaders on the front lines. We want to thank our host who continue to support the community by developing this great content. If you want to support This Week Health, let someone know about our channels. We have three, This Week Health Conference, This Week Health Newsroom, and finally, the channel that you just listened to, This Week Health Community. Check them out today. You can find them wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Google, Overcast, Spotify. You get the picture. We are everywhere. And you can also subscribe to our ongoing newsletter. It's at thisweekhealth.com. Go ahead and subscribe today. We also want to thank our show partners for investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. Thanks for listening. That's all for now. Hey.